when we have competent public health medicine specialists placed in every district, even at the root cause, uh, at the field level, the, the health of the people yeah, will get better. And thank you, the people of Sarawak, for being so hospitable and so amazing. Thank you and So we have an example of Dr. Anita, who is a senior executive for the College of Public Health here in Malaysia. But we found out throughout the conversations that her association was actually a subset of the Ministry of Health and was entirely dependent on the mission and vision and the goals of the Ministry of Health. And through our exercise, she came to the conclusion that she actually needed to go back and engage her association, her fellow executive, into developing bylaws for her associations and developing an impact strategy for that association. The, the thing is that uh, uh, if you see the association, we don't, con we don't control the placement of the public medicine specialist, but we can assist in bringing up or uplifting their confidence as well as their competence level through various professional activities. Currently, we have very limited professional activities. We have to have more professional activities that would help the public medicine specialists out there, the young and the old, right, to, to, to look at the College of Public Health as a platform for them to increase their competence, competence level. The mission is for the country to have world-class public health medicine specialists. We do not control the training intake, for example, the numbers of public health medicine specialists that will be trained over the years. But we can assist the government in ensuring those public health medicine specialists graduated from the university has certain level or required level of competencies. This course actually made me look back into the mission, the vision, and the statement and the purpose of why this college is here. We have not achieved the mission. What we thought you know, is required by us to come up, for example, to come up with a standard curriculum to be used by all university. That's it. But at the end of the day, we learned that the outcome is important. Now, what we want, the outcome here is that we want a competent public health medicine specialist. We heard from the user, the university trained specialist, and the user are the Ministry of Health, or probably from the local authority who have posed for the public health medicine specialist. So we leave it to them to assess the competency. So we are some sort detached. I feel there is a huge gap. We are promoting, but uh, we are not really advancing. The, 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 that is this mission statement, advancing the professional, uh, this is where we say uh, the public health specialist practice. Okay, So this is where uh, we are limited to only providing platform for conference, which happen only once every two years. So what about in between? There are huge gap, two years, what sort of activities that would help these public health professionals to develop their, their competencies postgraduate? Uh, apart from their day-to-day -day job, there is no mechanism or activity to help them to increase or to improve on their competencies. So this is the reason why the young public health medicine specialists don't see the need for them to join in the association. There is no giving back. You know, so this is something that I really, you know, this course is actually open up uh, all those uh, gaps actually that we need to address. So, and I really convinced to relook and come up with our bylaw. Currently, the academy, the parent association, has its own has its own constitution that we can't uh, change, not really can't change, but we take time to change. But uh, for each chapter or college, like for example, that I'm leading the public health, uh, College of Public Health Medicine, we can have our bylaw. So this is where I want to take the opportunity from what I have learned from this course to bring back and then to sit down with the ESCOs, the key people in the association, to come up with our bylaw and to improve on the function of the association so that we are known to uh, known to 
every public health medicine specialist who graduated from the university so that we want to be the platform where all public health medicine specialists after graduation, you know, they rely on us to help them to come up or to increase their competencies. And in such a way, we are also helping the users, like the Ministry of Health, you know, in terms of competent uh, public health medicine specialists. That is my, 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 my uh, hope. So as an outcome, unplanned outcome, I have to say, because again, we are not sure what we're going to get and who we're going to get and what's going to happen. For us, it's a fantastic. The short-term outcome is her having that realization and for her to, you know, testify that what we're giving her is a decent enough framework for her to go back and do that. I am hoping that in six months or 12 months that she's going to get back to us and say, hey, the midterm outcome of that class is that we've actually created a bylaw. We have a much more focused mission. We want to do this. We've got an impact strategy and that they're going to start tracking that and measuring that. Let me just share with you what I have in my mind in terms of the measurement of long term. Long term would be the competent public health medicine specialists. Of course, the numbers of public health medicine specialists should increase in the country. Gradual increase. This is not a sudden increase. It involves money, it involves scholarship, and it also involves capability of the university to bring in or to take in. So it has to be a staggered increase. Numbers of public health medicine specialists uh, are graduated. All right. Say, for example, after five years, there is an estimation number that we need based on uh, we should have at least 2.5 uh, public health medicine specialists for every 100,000 population. Okay. So we we don't have enough. So we need to churn out more. The university need to churn out more. So that is numbers, right? But there will be a long term. Okay, short term would be uh, 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 numbers of uh, the universities or training providers currently are providing the training required by the country. Okay. Now currently we have five or six. So we would encourage more university to fill in the gap. Right? Or if there is a difficulty because there is regulation, because not any, or not any uh, uh, training provider can provide the training because there is laws, regulations that they have to abide. So the other mechanism is that the existing uh, training provider, they should increase the intake of, 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 of young doctors to learn or to study on public health medicine. But that also again need another uh, ministry with the Ministry of Finance to, to give the finance, okay. But in the long term, we want public health medicine specialists to be the person at every district who are being referred to whenever we have crisis. Whenever we have any crisis, what they see is the public health medicine specialist who will lead and manage the crisis. That kind of change is what, why I'm doing what I'm doing.